Major funding for Hitting the Road is provided by Overstock.com. Overstock.com has launched pet adoptions. Every year, 8 million animals are placed into adoption centers across the United States. Our pet adoptions bring homeless animals all together in one place. Allowing you to search using the technology that powers Overstock.com. Additional funding provided by General Atomic Sciences Education Foundation, the Calm Foundation, Delta Solutions and Strategies, Gray Line of Colorado, Northrop Grumman, and by viewers like you. Thank you. They say that necessity is the mother of invention. Have you ever had an idea to make something new or possibly fix a problem? Well, it turns out that we all have the capacity to change the world around us. Excuse me. Hey, Lee. I'm Donna Vesey, your Adventurista, and today we are hitting the road to meet a few innovators whose inventions have changed our lives. I'm hitting the road again. Got adventure crawling under my skin. Going places that I've never been. I'm hitting the road. I'm hitting the road again. Going to take along all of my friends. Living life like there's just no end. When I think of inventors, usually famous people like Henry Ford and Thomas Edison come to mind. But it's easy to forget that everything we see and use every day had to be invented and improved by someone. So what does it mean to innovate? Well, it simply means taking something and making it better. Everybody has that feeling of seeing something and thinking, wow, I could have invented that or I had that idea. And the only thing that separates them from the person who did that thing was the doing. So the next time you have a great idea, don't stop there. Decide how can I put this thing into practice. I had an idea, I thought it made sense, and I wasn't gonna give it up. Well, if anybody has an idea that they, in the back of their mind, that they think is great, I'd say absolutely pursue it. I mean, there's no reason not to, you know? Just uh, start with some sketches and talk to some people and brainstorm and, and just, you know, visualize making this product that you think, maybe your friends think it's just really weird or crazy, but, you know, if, it, if it's right to you, then you should pursue your, your dreams and your invention. What it takes to become an inventor really is just that natural curiosity, that desire to try to solve a problem, whether it be an annoyance for yourself or a problem that you see just in your day-to-day -day life. And you want to take it beyond just simply the annoyance, but you actually want to go solve the problem. And that's literally the spark that really becomes the catalyst for inventors today. If it weren't for inventors, we'd all still be sitting around in caves wondering where our next meal would come from. Inspiration can come from anywhere, but for many of us, it's personal. I had the idea for The Shoe That Grows about uh, seven years ago. So after college, I wanted to travel. I wanted to see the world a little bit, and I uh, lived in Quito, Ecuador, and then Nairobi, Kenya. And when I was in Nairobi, I got to live and work at an orphanage. Uh, just incredible kids, wonderful kids. And one day uh, we were walking to church and next to me was a little girl in a white dress. And I remember looking down and just being shocked at how small her shoes were. And I, I remember looking around at the other kids and, and just seeing so many kids with shoes that didn't fit. And so I got back later that day and I asked the director of the orphanage, why do so many of the kids have shoes that don't fit? And he said that they'd received some donations about a year ago hadn't received any more donations since then and didn't have any money to buy the kids new shoes. And they're kids, you know, their feet are always growing. So just right then and there, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if there was a pair of shoes that could adjust and expand their size, uh, a pair of shoes that could grow. Um, it seemed like that would make a lot of sense for the kids. The Sleep Shepherd is uh, an innovative invention to help people sleep better without their having to resort to drugs. The motivation behind that was, uh, unfortunately, I have a daughter diagnosed with a terrible sleeping disorder. And the drugs that were prescribed for her just wreaked havoc on her body. 
and I thought there must be a better way, and I began to learn all I could about sleep. Um, my inspiration for creating the mountain board was we were avid snowboarders at the time and just really couldn't get enough of snowboarding during the season. So we thought, well, if we can create something, you can ride on grass or dirt. So right. we just took a little bit of every part we could find and in our garage, welded it together. And you know, the first prototypes were really crude, but they allowed us to ride on these dirt surfaces. The spark for me to kind of go down this innovation path was my early mentor, a guy by the name of Bob Davis. He hired me out of college into my first job. I ended up going to three companies with him, including a company where I did my very first product with individual software. Uh, Bob basically said, you can either be a great software engineer or you could be a great innovator. The difference being is, is I could take directions from other people or I could execute my own ideas. Most of us take for granted our everyday conveniences. But the truth is that everything that makes our lives easier was invented by someone and improved by someone else. We wear them every day and don't give them a second thought. However, mission work in impoverished countries gave Kenton Lee an idea. His shoes are made for growing. So, so tell me how, explain how it works to me. Sure. How does it grow? So this is the shoe that grows, mm -hmm. and this shoe can grow five sizes and last up to five years, and it grows in three main places. So it can grow in the front, with what we call a post and these holes. It can grow on the sides with these snaps, and then it can also grow on the back with a buckle. So when kids wear the shoes, uh, they can just you know, slip it on, it fits great, but then once it starts to get uncomfortable, once their foot starts to grow, all they have to do is just adjust it so it feels comfortable. And then we didn't want it to grow all these sizes and not have it last very long, so we actually made it with a compressed rubber which is very similar to just a tire rubber. And then the rest of the shoe is just a very quality leather. And so this shoe can you know, withstand just about anything, just a very functional, long-lasting shoe. We made it with no mechanical parts, just a very simple, long-lasting, functional shoe that can help protect the feet of kids around the world. Take Jason Lee, who's an avid snowboarder. But what do you do when the snow melts? Well, he turned his problem into a global enterprise and year-round fun. What is a mountain board? A mountain board is like a snowboard with wheels. But uh, when you really look at it, it's kind of a combination of a skateboard and a surfboard and a snowboard and a bike all rolled into one. Uh, so that's a mountain board. It's like a you know, monster truck of skateboards. There's been a lot of things in the past. Skateboards, bigger skateboards with larger wheels, and, but they didn't really allow you to seriously go off-road. Was your intention in the beginning to turn this into a business or was it just for personal use? You know, what we thought from the very beginning was that worst case scenario, we'd have a bunch of really cool boards to ride. But um, in the back of my mind, I've always been an entrepreneur and a kind of inventor. So I thought we can combine it. My love of the sport and carving and riding. And then also if we can sell some too, that'd be great. What is the coolest thing about mountain boarding? The coolest thing about mountain boarding, to me anyway, is that you can adventure into terrain that nobody has ever gone to before in the history of the world and ride down an area and just, you know, get that experience of really pioneering, you know, uh, your path through this new terrain. It's, it's the best feeling ever. I've been able to experience a lot of cool things through mountain boarding and through the company in MBS and I've traveled around the world. I've been to Japan a bunch. and. Uh, one of the coolest things I remember is we were on an island off of Japan. You know, that itself is totally cool. And we're at the top of an extinct volcano. You know, the sun's setting and the wind's blowing. I'm with like these two other mountain boarders and you know, we just rode down in the sunset, you know, down to the, to the beach area. It was one of the coolest experiences I've had. Dr. Michael Larson, an MIT graduate and founder of Mind Rocket, is one innovator working hard to make the world a better place for the rest of us. We have tens of millions of people just in the U.S. alone who are not getting sufficient sleep. It affects their quality of life, it leads to accidents, all kinds of problems in society. And the drugs that are currently available leave people feeling in a fog, they have bad side effects, 
So I gathered a team of uh, some of my closest uh, colleagues to see if we couldn't invent something to help all of those people. And what we came up with is a nightcap, but ours has a high-tech twist. The hat has built into it a brainwave sensor. One thing we know about sleep is when you're in it, your brainwave rate slows down. So if we can do something to encourage that without drugs, that would be great. So our hat plays uh, tones that have a hypnotic effect on the brain that literally lull it to sleep. And the frequency of that effect is moderated by this brainwave sensor. So it's a biofeedback loop. And I'm happy to report that it is helping people get better sleep. The capacity to find solutions to our needs and problems doesn't just lie with a few gifted and talented people. According to Phil McKinney, author of Beyond the Obvious, we all have the capacity to innovate. Everybody is creative and everybody can be an innovator. The challenge being is, is that in most cases people don't think of themselves as being highly creative or as an innovator. It comes from the standpoint of just having never exercised it. It's a skill though that we all have. It's a skill that you can learn, it's a skill you can practice, and it's a skill that anybody can become proficient at. The challenge for the educational system is, is we've taught based on a test-taking mentality that there's one and only one correct answer. So the example in the book of where Mary had a little leg, everybody answers with the word lamb because they think they're answering the test. But in the case of innovation, that's the obvious answer. What we really want to drive is, is for people to get beyond that obvious answer to find those next second, third, fourth, fifth answers. And that becomes really that enlightening new ideas that most people just will never go to that effort to find that next opportunity. In my view, the educational system actually unteaches creativity. If you go into a kindergarten class today and you ask kindergartners to dance a new dance for you or sing you a song or show you their artwork. Every kindergarten wants to run up and show you something. Now if you ask that same question from kindergarten through senior high school, that number gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Why? Because what we're doing is we're teaching kids conformity. And the whole idea of creativity and innovation is to be abnormal. Not to fall into conformity of everybody else, but to be unique to show your uniqueness from the standpoint of the creativity. I think invention isn't so much like a profession or a thing that you do. It is more like an attitude. And the nice thing is, is uh, unlike being a TV hostess or an engineer or a physician where you need a lot of specialized knowledge, being an inventor and an innovator is an attitude that you can bring to any one of those endeavors and activities that you're engaged in. Now tell me about Because International. Sure thing. Uh, because International is our 501c3 nonprofit organization. Down the, down the road we hope to be able to tackle lots of different challenges. Um, that people in extreme poverty are facing. Uh, the shoe that grows is just our first project. So with Because International, we believe in practical compassion. We want to help people with everyday, simple, regular types of things that, that uh, are just normal. And for many people who live in extreme poverty, sometimes it's those really simple everyday things that can be the most challenging. So we believe that those small things those everyday things make a huge difference, and we want to try to tackle as many projects as we can. Um, and we have a little tagline, we say that we try to make things better by making better things. And we hope that we can use practical compassion to help change the everyday life of people living in extreme poverty. Tell me how the Mountain Board has evolved over the years. Well, the Mountain Board has evolved quite a bit. Even though the one you're seeing right here looks relatively simple, there's a lot of technology in it. But the early ones were really heavy. You know, you couldn't really go seriously off-road or jump or, or carve in really hard. And just with the advent of some composite materials and molding technology, we've just made it from like 40 pounds now down to 15 pounds. Now, since you started this company, when did you start it? What year? Uh, we started in 92, 1992. And where are your boards being sold today? The boards, uh, believe it or not, are sold in over 30 countries uh, in around the world. Uh, Japan, Europe, England, um, United States, of course, and just everywhere in between. 
Well, it's just so much fun to get these shoes out to kids who need them. It's a great shoe that protects the foot of kids who don't have shoes or can't afford new shoes every year. So just to know that these are, are getting out there to kids, and again, something really simple that makes a huge difference in their lives. Uh, it, it really just puts a smile on my face to know that kids are gonna have a pair of shoes that are gonna fit and something that they're not even gonna need to worry about anymore. Having a pair of shoes that don't fit or you know, outgrowing their shoes. Right. Um, they can keep on adjusting these, expanding these, and they're always gonna have a pair of shoes that fit. The people who drive to a different beat are those that you really do wanna find. The problem is, is in most organizations, they get rejected because they don't fit, right? We all tend to hire people just like us or just like our little tribe of people. So you have to go out and make that effort to find those people who are a little different and bring them into your organization. The guidance that I give all innovators when I'm coaching and mentoring them is you better have thick skin because <laughs> you will have the corporate antibodies, the people that come out of the woodwork that just tell you, no, 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 it's a bad idea or I've tried it before or, Hey, I'm the expert in this industry. You know, you you know, don't don't try that. And what many cases is is it's it's those people are kind of just stuck in the rut. They're stuck from a historical perspective. The really great innovators are the ones that are actually somewhat naive. They're not experts in the industry. They're not experts in the technology. They come in without that perspective, and it's really them trying to break that new ground and find that new way to go do something. Antibodies exist everywhere, including individual inventors. In that case, it could be the antibodies of venture capitalists they're trying to raise money from, and the venture capitalists are saying, no, your idea is no good. Could be um, hiring on or trying to bring on new employees. An antibody could be someone in your family who's saying, no, 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 you know, keep that nice, safe job you've got, don't take this risk. In all those cases, you have to think about them as you would any antibody. Why are they negative? Because they don't have enough information. Am I not conveying the passion or why I think this is such a good idea? Look, there's stories in Silicon Valley of people who've gone and talked to 40, 50, 60 venture capitalists before they finally get to the one. Then they get that and they turn into being billion dollar businesses. So just because someone says no, then you may think that they know more than you. If you've got passion around that idea, push forward. One of the great things about mountain boarding is the camp programs around the country that, that we work with. So there's Boy Scout camps or just your summer, normal summer camp for kids to go and learn sports. So instead of before it's just archery and whatever backpacking, now it's mountain boarding as one of your options at camps. So, you know, it's really great because these camps make courses for the boards and they teach people the basics so it's it's safe as well as super fun they use all the pads and helmet and gear and walk them through these steps so mountain boarding has been voted you know top activity at a lot of camps uh, in the summer what was the first thing you ever invented uh, I invented a medical device that's currently used in surgeries across the country that uh, dispenses little bioabsorbable staples in fact, uh, for me, uh, that motivation of creating things to make people's lives better was really important to me. And that's why I continue to pursue invention. And uh, I have done some medical devices since then. So I've skateboarded since I was a kid and was really into that. And then in junior high, I started racing BMX. So the mountain board, looking back now, is kind of a real nice combination between skateboarding with the board where you can carve and BMX, it's got wheels, and you could go over that terrain that you really want to ride all the time. So yeah, that's, that's, this, is the, this is the result of that, being a skateboarder and a, a bicyclist. Back when I was a little kid, I was proverbially the kid taking apart the thermostat or taking apart the TV. I drove my parents absolutely crazy. <laughs> However, my original major in college was architecture, not engineering. Um, I'm a very visual learner. Um, I'm very, you know, graphic and drawing, photography. So that's how I kind of you know, exercised my creative bent. But as I got through that, I quickly figured out though that uh, engineering was actually more of my bent from the standpoint of actually building stuff rather than you may do, a, you know, a handful of houses your entire career not satisfactory for me. I wanted to build things that were going to be coming out on a much more regular basis. So then I switched and picked up and changed my entire focus to be software engineering, albeit my focus was in, in computer graphics. 
So I kept the visual side of my, my focus. So were you one of those kids that was always taking things apart, putting them back together again? Of course I was one of those kids. The first time I took apart an Oreo, I got a taste of that and I was hooked. <laughs> what was the first thing that you ever did take apart? Uh, well, when I was a kid, I would take apart small appliances, uh, light bulbs, just to see what was inside. Trying to limit myself to things that were broken, typically, because the fun was in the taking apart. Putting back together doesn't always go so well. So not only have I always been an innovator, uh, you have too. It's just a matter of, do you know it? What advice would you give to young people today about innovating? My advice to young people is to begin innovating today. Don't wait till you're in, even in high school or even in college. Um, I've written a bunch of stories on young kids who've invented things in grade school and in junior high who've gone on to great success. Don't wait. The other is work on your creativity skills today, right? Think about art, think about those types of things that kind of force you to get out of that comfort zone and do new creative things. Music is a great source of creative spark for a lot of people. It's also finding those organizations such as First Robotics, where you have to bring your innovation skills as part of a team and create robots that compete. Um, there's a whole bunch of these kinds of organizations. Don't wait, get involved now. Work on those creativity skills because as the importance of this innovation economy the value of companies and the value of countries is determined by the value and quality and quantity of the ideas. If you want to be a workforce in the future, you have to be ready for this innovation economy, which means creativity and innovation becomes a critical skill for that success. Well, if anybody has an idea that they, in the back of their mind that they think is great, I would say absolutely pursue it. I mean, there's no reason not to, you know? Just uh, start with some sketches and talk to some people and brainstorm and, and just you know, visualize making this product that you think maybe your friends think is just really weird or crazy, but you know, if, it, if it's right to you, then you should pursue your, your dreams and your invention. Uh, one thing that I really like about this topic of invention is the tool that we use for being creative and innovative is our brain. And we carry that around with us everywhere we go. It's engaged in everything that uh, we get involved with. And some people consider Albert Einstein maybe to be the most innovative or creative person maybe ever. And it's interesting that when his brain was analyzed, uh, studied for science, we discovered that actually it's smaller than the average adult brain. So whatever it was he had for being creative and innovative, most of us have more of it. Now, what are we doing with it uh, is another question. And I think we just need to decide that we're gonna do the most with it that we can. Yeah, so if anyone out there has a, a great idea, something that you're passionate about, uh, something that you just, you know, those crazy thoughts that we think sometimes, if you've got an idea, if you think it's good, just stick with it. You know, this took me five years, uh, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work, a lot of struggling, a lot of not knowing what to do, a lot of failure, and you just keep going and going and going. And, you know, in my case, you know, it didn't happen overnight. I think for a lot of people, it doesn't happen overnight. But if you really believe in it, just keep going and good things are gonna happen. So I'm not the classic uh, inventor or innovator. Um, I didn't go to you know MIT or Harvard, anything like that. I but just, you saw a need. I saw a need, I had an idea. It seemed like it made sense. It seemed like it was a good idea. And uh, you know, just kept working hard at it and here we are today. And so now it's really fun to see other people say that is a good idea let's be a part of that you know how can we help get these shoes out to these kids and so from one little idea so many things can happen inventions can have a significant impact on our lives and now we know that we all have the capacity to create as long as we put our minds to it because everything we use every day from the hairbrush we use this morning to the TV you're watching right now had to be invented by someone who thought, what if? I'm hitting the road again. Got adventure crawling under my skin. Going places that I've never been. I'm hitting the road. I'm hitting the road again. Going to take along all my friends. Living life like there's just no end.
Major funding for Hitting the Road is provided by Overstock.com. Overstock.com has launched pet adoptions. Every year, 8 million animals are placed into adoption centers across the United States. Our pet adoptions bring homeless animals all together in one place. Allowing you to search using the technology that powers Overstock.com. Additional funding provided by General Atomic Sciences Education Foundation, the Calm Foundation, Delta Solutions and Strategies, Gray Line of Colorado, Northrop Grumman, and by viewers like you. Thank you.